What's poppin' TJTV? Welcome back to another full episode. This is episode 122. I'm here with a very special guest, Chris Rab, who it was on CKY, Jackass, Viva La Bam. And actually, like, I grew up watching, like, these guys do, like, define, like, stu- like death-defined stunts. And it's just, like, I want to say thank you for my show, honestly, like, from the bottom of my heart. Like, it's not yeah, every man. day. It's not every day you get, like, someone who was, like, on TV. And, like, I've had people who were famous on my show before. But, like, you know, it's, like, not an everyday thing. Yeah, dude. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, you're welcome, man. But, so, like, what what do you, like, how's your day going? You're I know you're in L.A. right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Good day. I have the day off, so that's nice. I've been working like a madman. <laughs> uh, I'm a camera guy at this point, so I'm working six, seven days a week, uh, depending on I'm on a show right now. So uh, today was my first day off in two weeks, so I'm uh, psyched to have the day off and just kind of chilling. Yeah, I mean, I know how you feel. Like, I just was on vacation. I was actually in L.A. not too long ago, and I came back yesterday around, like, 5 o'clock at, like, a.m., and I just, like, couldn't sleep at all last night. I had to come to work this morning, and then I'm just, like, you know, wide awake now, and I'm drinking, nice. drinking like, energy drinks to keep me awake. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so let's start off with, like, this whole little process. So what was your childhood like? Uh... My childhood, uh, I'm going to say pretty normal, lived in the suburbs, and uh, and kind of grew up, uh, my mom, like a single mom, um, so we, uh, I kind of like ran him up a little bit as a kid, and, and uh, met Bam early on in elementary school, and him and I uh, skateboarded and stuff, and then just kind of uh, used to just cause havoc, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so like, when you... When you met Ben, did he push, like, the filming to start, like, the series CKY? Like, how did that, like, all come about? Uh, no, well, we actually met when we were, like, six years old. So, like, we didn't start doing the CKY stuff until a little later. Uh, very early on when we, were, when we were in elementary school, Ben had, like, a little skateboard team called Team X. And uh, his, his dad had built, like, two half pipes in the backyard. So all the kids in the neighborhood would come over to his house and skate on those ramps. And uh, we'd all get these little haircuts with like X's in the back of our head because <laughs> we were like on this little this little skate team when we were like eight years old, you know. Um, and then uh, that kind of started leading to filming stuff because actually Bam was was a really good skateboarder. Uh, I mean, I used to ride a little mini ramp, but Bam like stood out. You know, he was right. kind of it, it was like ollie it off of the roof into the ramp, and uh, and so his dad would would videotape. Uh, some of the skateboarding, and that led to like a little sponsorship for a local skate shop called Fairman's, and uh, and then like there was Cheap Skates was another skate park that we would go to and stuff, and we always used to kind of drive around in his dad's banana boat, which was, was this this sticker car, and it was this big yellow old like Chevy, and uh, and it just had stickers on the whole entire thing, and and Phil would take us like from skate ramp to skate ramp and, and skate park to skate park and drive us around so we could skate. We go down to uh, Love Park in, in, in Philly. Um, like I said, I, I was a kid that kind of got on a skateboard here and there and, and tried to ride, but Bam was somebody who just stuck out uh, big time. And so that's why Phil would, would uh, have a camera around all the time. Right. And that, that's kind of what led to the CKY stuff because like uh, later in middle school, we met Ryan Dunn and uh, and Brandon DiCamillo. We, we might have known Brandon a little before Dunn. Um, and then, like, Ray Gion and Art Webb, 1986, and all those guys. And uh, so that, like, kind of, they were around. Everybody was around. Bam was skating. Uh, Mike Maldonado was an awesome skateboarder in Westchester that we always hung out with. And, uh, and Kerry Getz started coming around. Another guy, uh, Chris Astete, was was an awesome skateboarder, and so there would be guys filming their skate tricks. But then, like you know, Ryan and Brandon and me and Rake would be like just around and and just kind of causing shit, you know, yeah. like just to keep ourselves, you know, like entertained. And so basically, the camera went from the skateboard and then kind of turned on to the, the random stuff we were doing. And, uh, and then, yeah, it was kind of, Bam was the ringleader in, in the fact of, you know, 
wanting to take all that footage and put it together and, and do something with it. And, uh, and that's what led to the first CKY video, which was uh, actually was a skate video for a company called Landspeed, which was one of BAM's sponsors at that point. And uh, so it was kind of a hodgepodge of skateboarding and, and just the CKY craziness. Right. And then led to it. And then, then the second one, CKY 2K, I think is the one that really kind of got some recognition. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, very early on, I think we were, we were like, when I when we were filming that stuff, uh, there's footage from being like 10, 12 years old. You know, like I used to just love to like stir shit up. So I would, I would always like, go into the grocery store and knock shit off the, the shelves or like, or go into like a fast food restaurant and just like put like random food in like different containers that weren't, you know, and they'd be like, Hey, you never bought that. And you just like, just like throw it at whatever, like just to cause shit. And, uh, it was just basically to entertain one another, you know, like try and make Bam laugh or try and make Brandon laugh or try and make Ryan laugh. And, uh, and then they kind of, you know, everybody was reciprocating that and, um, and so that kind of just led to what it was. I think like the nice thing is we just, we had a camera around and it was just who we were. It wasn't like we had any like idea of, Oh, we want to get on a TV show or we want to do this. It was more like this is just who we are. And there happens to be a camera there capturing it, you know? Yeah. And, and so we, we would like cut out of some of our classes in school and go film stuff like, at the high school, like on property, we had this awesome graphic arts teacher that would let us like go film stuff during his class. So, um, so we did that stuff in high school too. And then that, that again, that's what led to the CKY stuff. So we've been doing it kind of forever. Uh, we would shoot some stupid little skits, you know, like there's dumb skits where we're like pretending to be the teacher and then like the students are fucking off, like, <laughs> in, like, uh, you know, like detention or whatever. And, uh, and so there was just all these little kind of bits and pieces. And, and I think that's, that's where like the, uh, you know, the smarts of, of Bam came together is he, he brought all the bits and pieces together and had an awesome editing style with the CKY video, which then like got people, you know, taking note. Right. Wow. Jesus. That's like a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. So it was, yeah, it was a cool kind of, it was an awesome experience. I think like being young and, and like, like I said, at that point in time, none of us had any idea that that would ever turn into something like a TV show right. or any of that stuff. So it was just like stupid, innocent fun that I feel like is uh, is kind of the best kind because y you know you you don't have anybody looking over your shoulder. You're just doing what you're doing and you're having a blast doing it and just trying to make your friends laugh. Right, and I know I know you got. I think Bam said he sold it to like local skate shops around, like Fairman's, which was one of them, and then. It just expanded into like a bigger like franchise as it like you know as it got more popular and whatnot. Yeah. So, but um, so when you were in high school, I know you did it off of a dare, I believe. You got expelled. No, no, I did. I love saying that. I came up with the content, and then uh, I was not gonna. Maybe we're losing connection. Yeah. Uh, do I have you? Yeah, yeah, I think we lost connection. Oh, that's yeah, that's fine. So it wasn't off of a dare you said it was just. Yeah, Ben loves to say they dared me to do it, but no, I, I was about to get expelled from school. I had a meeting with the principals in the morning with my parents and the principals, and they were they basically were like, "Hey, if Chris gets in trouble one more time this school year, then he's gonna be expelled." So like, right after I got out of the meeting, I was like, "Fuck this, dude! I'm going out with a bang." And, uh, <laughs> And so when I got into health class, one there was this teacher who had a coffee mug on the desk. Yeah. And uh, and Bam and I were, were having to take this like makeup quiz. So we were sitting in this classroom and that was like adjacent to the classroom we were in. And I was looked at him, I was like, dude, I'm gonna take a shit in that coffee mug. And he was like, You won't do that. Like and then so then he's like, Oh, I dare you. Like so that was it. But but the whole idea was I was I knew I was going out with a bag that day and, and uh so I took the mug to the to the bathroom and I took a shit in it. And the plan was to put it back on the desk of this health teacher. But um, I never made it back because I took the shit. Then some kid came walking in to the bathroom and I'm like trying to cover the turd up, you know, and he's like, 
looking at me like, what, what's that? And I'm like, uh, and I like ran out of the bathroom and then I, I get to the hallway and then this girl, like this like nerdy girl that like you could tell, she would definitely tell on me. So like, I was like, oh, what do I do? So I just kind of panicked and then just threw it on the lockers. <laughs> and, uh, and then it just spread like all over the lockers and then like some shit got onto my foot. Oh. From like, there was like a fucking hunk of shit on my foot. So I'm like, oh, and I can smell it. And I like run over to the, the water fountain and I'm like, rinsing my shoe off in the water fountain. There's just shit going into the water fountain. And this teacher like comes out of the classroom and like sees the shit on the lockers yeah. and like, grabs the phone and is like sitting there like, um, yeah, so someone defecated on the lockers in the B-Wing. And so then like I snuck back into the classroom and like right when I got back, like, like Bam's like, where is it? I was like, oh, dude, it, like didn't, you know, it didn't make it. And so then I, I was telling them, like, I threw it all over the lockers. And we're sitting there as the teacher, Mr. McConnelly, uh, I shouldn't say his name, but whatever. Yeah. He, uh, he, he was sitting there like, what's so funny, Rap? Like, what's so funny? And I was like, oh, nothing. You know, like, <laughs> trying to pretend like nothing. And, and some of the kids in that, in that area of the B-Wing, they got let out early so they could, like, make it to their next class. And you could just hear them being like, what is that? Like, ew, ew, I think it's shit, you know? And everybody's, like, swarming around the lockers. And then, like, I got out of class, and I'm, like, trying to sneak by. Yeah. Like, as the principals are right there, and they have us dying laughing at the at the turd on the locker, and I'm, like, trying to keep my head down. Because, like, I, I was, like, at that point, I was kind of, like, trying to get away with it. But I knew, like, I wouldn't. And uh, I next period... I uh, decided to, like, ditch the rest of the day and go out and, like, wait out in the parking lot for a friend that was coming out, like a, senior, a kid that was, uh, yeah. he, he drove to school, so he was coming out. But from what I gathered and what I heard, like, immediately everybody in the school already knew it was me, and they were like, who would have done that? It would have been rap, you know? Yeah. Like, and, um, and so, like, at that time, like, I didn't go back to school the next day. They, apparently, there was a whole long line of people to tell on me because they were offered, like, a $200 reward. So I went back to school, got arrested, and had to, like, get arrested in front of everybody. It was, like, uh, it, it was like destruction of private property, vandalism. They charged me with, like, all this crazy stuff. And, like, they had to shut down the, the B-Wing because, like, basically, like, poop is like toxic or whatever like considered like a biohazard so they had to like fumigate the whole thing and like not let anybody go in there so it was like this big thing and uh immediately expelled and then i uh and then i went to a boarding school after that and you got your diploma after that yeah yeah i i, I uh I, i'm a college graduate too like yeah. i i uh yeah i, I went to uh shippensburg uh, right oh yeah, I went to Shippensburg. That's where I graduated from college. But I went to Church Farm School, uh, which is a boarding school after uh, after Westchester East. Oh, okay. And then, like, uh, I finished out like school there, and I did well and whatever. It was just it was a different type of a school there, which was cool. Uh, public school, man. I just lived for the attention. I lived for cause and shit. Like, <laughs> I always laugh because like Bam and, and Ryan and those guys like. They, the worst things they would do would be like maybe skip a class or something. But like I was a little fuck face that just loved to like seriously like my day. Like I couldn't wait to wake up and go to school because I knew I was just gonna fuck with shit. You yeah. know, like and uh, and so like that was it. I knew I had an audience there. You know, and and uh, and that was a, that was almost a lot of fun. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, that's pretty. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> like. I, I hear this story all the time and it always like makes me laugh because like you never, my kids, my age, I'm 23. I would never have like done something like crazy as that. Like, I mean, the, th yeah. the worst thing I did was possibly there. So when I was in eighth grade, there's this girl, no one liked her. And they're like, I dare you to spit on her. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I spit on this girl, but it was on her shirt. And like, I didn't mean to, you know, I didn't mean for that to go that way, but I got suspended for, harassment uh being like sexist and i just got like all this like brought from this principle because like yeah well you, you guys grew up in such a different time too like i think like nowadays i don't know if i would fit well in that world because like 
everything is so PC. You can't like, there's so many rules of all this stuff. I would feel like I would just go nuts because like that even back then you'd get away with a lot more and I still would be sticking out kind of doing shit just because I, I just always found it to be fun. Like I, I, I wouldn't fuck with like, like, you know, like nerdy kids or like people that had like issues. Like I wouldn't right. do that. My main issue, my, my main mission was like find the coolest kid in the school and fuck with him. You know, like, so like there would be situations like that where it's like the captain of the basketball team and I'm like, I'm just going to go fuck with this guy so bad. He's trying to hit on girls and you're just like just constantly annoying him and doing shit. And like, that was like, that was the, what I lived for was kind of doing that, you know, just yeah. kind of. Kind of picking on on the on the cool people, you know, <laughs> like the opposite of, of what normally happens. Uh, and I was I wasn't really much of a nerdy kid though when I went to school. I was more of like I know everybody, but like the sporty guys would like pick on me. Like I did karate for twelve years, and they all were like, "Oh, let's just fight this kid." I'm like, "No, like, you know, there's yeah. like seven football players wanting to fight like me." I'm like, "No, like I don't want to fight everybody. Like I'm just like that guy. Like I just want peace. That's the, that was my whole thing in school. Like." Yeah, but um, so yeah, I wasn't a fighter or any of that kind yeah. of stuff. I was more like, I just want to fuck with shit, you know. <laughs> I just like cause a disturbance. <laughs> yeah. So like after all that stuff, like you graduated, you're you know you got your diploma, you got on you like CKY footage was on Jackass. I guess like from the first like couple CKYs, right? They were on like a couple episodes of Jackass, and then Viva La Bam started right after that. So like. Were you, like, how did that happen? How did, like, the whole, like, you know, Jackass slash Viva La Bam thing happen? Um, I mean, it all happened from Bam Skateboarding, really. That was the connection to Jeff Tremaine. Right. And Jeff Tremaine, executive producer, director of Jackass. And so, and uh, and Spike Jones uh, is executive producer as well. And obviously Knoxville is, too. Uh, Knoxville was over at Big Brother Skateboard Magazine. Right. And doing crazy shit, like, you know, stun gunning himself, like bear spray, like all that kind of stuff. He was doing articles for Big Brother. Uh, and Big Brother was a very, very similar kind of thing uh, that we were doing too. Like, they, they were, you know, it's a skateboard world. It was like skateboarding and then fucking off, you know. And, uh, and I think uh, the, the main connection was Bam skateboarding connected him to Jeff Tremaine, which then brought all of us into that mix. And Spike and Jeff and Knoxville had this idea for Jackass, um, you know, based on all the stuff that Big Brother was doing. And when they, you know, saw CKY2K and that stuff, they, they kind of knew instantly, like, we need to get these dudes in the mix too right. and just point forces and, and make this, uh, you know, this thing happen. And so that was what happened, basically, like, Jeff – reached out to Bam and he had known Bam for a bunch of years uh, through skating and, and was like, let him know, Hey, we're going to, we're, we're pitching this pilot to MTV and comedy central um, for, you know, for this, this show that we're doing. And, uh, and so then like he took, you know, him, him and Spike and, and also took some of the footage from CKY, but then they came out about six months before the show aired and, and we filmed some more stuff for the pilot. And, uh, and then, yeah, the pilot, uh, got picked up by MTV and at the time I think it was like, all right, we might get one episode of this show and that episode aired and, uh, and I still remember like being in college and in Schiffensburg and, and people being like, dude, what the fuck you're on TV? I'm like, oh, I know it's crazy. Like, and, uh, I don't think we had any idea what would come of it. And right away, like it, it got good ratings people were like, you know, what the hell is this show? And wanted to watch it. And so then they ordered, like, um, I think something like seven more. So we did eight total for that first season. Right. Then we did uh, two more seasons of eight. And then, uh, like, a gumball rally thing. So it was, like, 25 episodes total of Jackass. Um, and the funny thing was that uh, all while Jackass was going on, we were still filming like a bunch of random shit too, like to see, you know, there would be tons of stuff and you're like, some stuff couldn't be aired on Jackass. Right. And some stuff could. And, uh, and so the stuff that couldn't would go to CKY3. And like, that was like me doing that, the 18 X lax, like running full speed shit. You I know? remember like, that. 
Yeah, like like that <laughs> that one couldn't be aired on MTV. Like they they had this clause like that you couldn't have spreadable butt cheeks. So uh, so that, I always thought that was so funny, like spreadable butt cheeks. But uh, so we weren't allowed to, to put that on. So that went on to CKY three. And I'll say CKY three was a lot of like the outtakes of what wasn't allowed to be aired. You know, at that time, like. Uh, Senator Lieberman at the time was, was trying to get the show off the air. A lot of people did not like Jackass, you know, and um, they, you know, thought it was a destruction of, you know, community and whatever and all this stuff. And they were worried because young kids were doing the same stupid shit and getting hurt. And it was like, you know, they had to put all these, uh, you know, these disclaimers on there. And, and the funny thing is, like, they would be like, this part performed by professionals, and we would always joke, like, oh, yeah, we're professionals. They, they're professional idiots. And uh, But the thing was, like, you know, as you look back, you think, well, most of us had done a lot of those stunts and those stupid things for most of our lives. So we figured out, like, how to get, how to fall and how to, like, take those hits and how to do that stuff. And just some random kid that never did it before, like, smacking each other with a shovel or something, Ooh. like, it's like, you know, they end up hurt or they jump off of, of a hotel roof into a pool and break their back. Like, it's like, dude, don't do that. Like, yeah. Ben did that. Steve-O did that, but I wouldn't do that. Like, I knew, like, no fucking way I'm doing that. You know, like, like oh, I could ride, like, a like a bike off of a roof into a bush. Like, that, I could, I could handle that. But, like, I knew my limitations, and I, I think that's what, like, some of the parents and, and uh, some of, you know, like, the uh, critics and stuff were worried was like that these kids don't know their limitations and they're just trying stupid stuff. So at that point, you know, people were trying to get it canceled and, and it was not the household name that it is now. And it was not like approved of by most people, you know? And yeah. I think, I think in a way it's kind of like, if you think about like, like two live crew or like, like music like that, where like it first got like the parent advisory sticker and they're like, everyone was worried. Like they don't want to have this like, this like label on their 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 CD or their tape or whatever, because then like you know it'll like distract from from people buying it. And really, all it did was make kids want it more, you know. And like so, I feel like that's kind of what happened with Jackass. Is like the more it was outlawed, the more people didn't want it. The more like kids were like, hell yeah, we want to watch that. Because yeah. that I was as a kid, you know, like I, I wanted to watch the shit I wasn't allowed to watch. You know, like <laughs> you, you you want to figure out a way to kind of go against the grain and do that. And um, so I think that only helped, you know, propel it more than, than it did to stop it. And, uh, and then that was what led to, after the first one, that led to the first movie. Right. And then Viva La Bam led after that. Yeah, after the first movie, they wanted to bring back Jackass, but Knoxville was doing, like, all these movies and stuff. And, uh, and, and he was, like, kind of moving into another direction. And, and they still wanted Jackass, so... They saw like Steve-O and Pontius, and they were like, "Dude, we want to make a show." And 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 I believe them and uh, them and Tremaine came up with the concept for Wild Boys. And then Bam, uh, they approached Bam and us and Bam's family and wanted to do a show. Like, and at first we thought it was like a CKY TV sort of thing, but it kind of melded more into like Jackass meets the Osbournes, yeah. and that was like how they sold it and that's what it basically Viva La Bam became you know and uh and then yeah so we did a we did five seasons of that show after that so like why so I know like everybody who was in the first CKY second CKY everybody was on that but like why was it only you Ryan DiCamello Rake and Bam like why what happened to everybody else like why wasn't like Mike on there Ryan G on there like they only appeared like very in like very few episodes what, what was up with all that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think what happens, you know, like in, in that world, like the TV world, you know, like, like other people get their hands on things and kind of control situations. But I think what happened was we were the core group, you know, of the guys from CKY. Right. So then that kind of was what they put the focus on. You know, like it's like, okay, well, everybody already knows, like, Ryan and Rab and Deco and Ray and Bam. So like, let's just keep it like those guys are all on Jackass. Everybody's starting to know who they are. Like, I think it becomes that marketability sort of thing. And, uh, and some of the guys, you know, would come on for some episodes like Carrie, 
guests would get on an episode or something and like uh, Tim O'Connor and those other skaters and shit from the area right. would get on an episode or two. But yeah, it, it very much became like about uh, April and Phil and Don Vito and, uh, and then like the core group of the CKY guys. Because hmm. the band, you know, the band is just as much of the videos as everybody, but they ended up signed by Island Def Jam and they were touring the world you know, while we're shooting the video. And I actually went on tour with them a lot too in between stuff. But, uh, but yeah, they, they, they should have been on the show just as much, you know, but it just became this kind of thing where they were like, this is the core group and that's who ended up on it. Right. Hmm. All right. Well, let's take a short little break. I just want to run and get my charger real quick. Cause my phone's like, okay. about to die. So, so we'll give it like a five second minute break. Sound good. Okay. All right. Give me one second. Alright. We are back. Oh god. Usually I never really take breaks, but you know, you gotta. Alright, so after all that, what happened? Like you went back to college essentially, right? Right after Viva La Bam and all that? Um yeah, I actually I moved out to uh, California for a couple years after Viva La Bam, um, and I was pitching some shows, and, and I got a show in development that never went, um, and then after that, I went back to college <clears throat> and finished out my last semester uh, at Shippensburg. Right, and that w so you guys filmed Haggard during Viva La Bam also, right? Uh, before Viva La Bam. That was before, so like... Yeah, it was kind of around the time of the Jackass movie. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it was uh, like... I think it was like 2001, we ended 2002. Right, and then I remember the story, you uh, you were coming home, you were going to Shippensburg, I heard this on the radio show. You were going to Shippensburg, you bought a cat, because like Jen was selling, cat, like Bam's old girlfriend was selling like cats or something, because they had kittens. You were going up there, your car caught on fire, and then you like smacked it out, and then you went to class, or you went to Shippensburg, missed all your classes because you fell asleep, and then... Coming back, you kind of ran into a little uh, trouble where you ran through a, a toll booth and hit a guardrail to stop the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all part of that fucking wild life at that point. You know, like uh, I had gotten a DUI prior to uh, right right before Jackass started, and uh, I totaled my car. I'd almost killed myself, and. Um, like people, had, uh, a van had found me on the side of the road, like in a pool of blood, and I oh. fucking was. It was it was an awful, awful accident. But um, after that, I didn't have a car, and uh, I had you know suspended license for a while. But then about the time that Haggard came up, that was when I like got my license back, but I didn't have a car yet. And uh, and so then this this like auto body company right in Westchester was donating a car to us for the movie Haggard and like as soon as I got it like um, I went over there to get it and I and I'm like it's a buddy of ours this guy Chris Hardy and he was like hey uh, dude just so you know like and I look in and, and on the steering wheel it just has a sign that says no brakes right and, uh, and I was like okay and I'm looking at the dashboard the dashboard like wires are like tape with like masking tape and it was like this ghetto ass thing. And he's like, all right, so there's no brakes, but like the metal on metal will stop you. Like just drive it to Bam's house, which like at the time that was still Bam's like parents' house. Uh, on, like, it was like a mile away. So they were like, yeah, you can make it there, but don't drive it after that. And so like, I was like, okay. So I drove to Bam's. As I'm going, like I, I noticed like you have to push the brakes like 50 feet or like 100 feet before the stop sign so that it'll stop you. Right. Because it's metal on metal, like, you know, <laughs> like this like crazy noise and, uh, and it stopped me enough. I get, I get to Ben's parents' house and uh, as soon as I get there, like, uh, like Ryan runs out with like a, a spray can and he just like 
writes like this big dick on the on the like the hood of it, and then like it, and he wrote I hate truckers like backwards on it, and then somebody comes out like a shark spit and put it on it. They spray they spray paint like rap sucks. They spray paint like all the shit like the whole car is covered in like rainbows and dicks and like rap sucks and I hate truckers and like fuck and whatever you know like the whole car is covered in all the spray paint and uh and so like we started filming with it you know like uh we filmed like a couple things and that was what led to me going shit like I need to get back to school but I didn't have a car but I needed to film the scene and then like I needed to get back to class because I had a test the next day and that was what led to the whole entire situation and it was that uh Jen Jen's cat had kittens and and she was like, Hey, will you take one of these? And I like I, I was like, All right. And so I took one and brought it in the car with me and I mean you know the story, but I, like basically the cat's running around the car like a fucking wild Indian and like and and like I'm driving and it's getting under my feet and I'm trying to like put it because it got out of the box that I had it in and like so I'm trying to put it back as I'm driving and and like as I'm driving, like the uh, it starts to rain, and then I try to hit the windshield wipers and notice there's no windshield wipers. It's just metal, like going across the window. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like <laughs> so it's just all this rain coming in. And as that's happening, the cat's running, and the dashboard because of the the masking tape just started like catching on fire. There's like this little flame and this little spark and all this smoke. And I so I'm like. Like flipping out, and I'm, I'm clapping out, trying to clap out the fire, and it's burning my hands. And like, all the, the windshield is flooded with rain, and I'm like, trying, this cat's running, and it's just fucking insane. So finally, I, like, I pull over, and the lights went out because of the dashboard right. like, having caught on fire. And so the lights are out, there's no wipers, and there's this cat, and I end up like, figure out like fuck i guess i just gotta sleep here on the side of the turnpike and so i slept on the side of the turnpike until like the sun came up and i kept trying like to go like 100 yards every like hour or so but you couldn't see shit and it was like raining and then when i got there i was so exhausted i'm like oh i'll just take a nap for 30 minutes and like i laid on the couch and missed my fucking test because i passed out and just didn't wake up yeah. and then on the way home that was when the breaks like that, that exit of downtown, the brakes ran out, and I'm flying around the thing, and, like, luckily, like, there was no one in the one, so I just, like, I just hit, you know, like, turned over and went flying through, and I'm, like, <laughs> reaching out the thing, like, oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> I couldn't tell, because it, it, like it was, like, a hill and a guardrail, and I'm, like, fuck, like, either I crashed into the hill, or, like, or I should hit the guardrail, but, like, in this short period of time, I'm like, fuck, there was this kid that got killed by the guardrail, like, near my house, because it impaled him. Like, when it went through the... Oh, wow. Impaled him and killed him. So, so I'm thinking, fuck, like, I'm going to do that or crash into the sink. If I crash into that, I'm going to fucking break my face on the steering wheel, because I just did that a year before. I broke my face and split my leg open all that in that accident. Yeah. The UI accident. So... I'm like, I don't want to hit that, I don't want to hit that, but then I finally just was like, fuck, I guess I got to hit the rail, and so I just hit it, and like, guard it along, and there's just sparks flying, like, all off of it, and finally it goes to the stop, and like, I get out and, and run back to the toll booth, like, with the money for the toll, and I hand it to the lady, and she's like, what the hell, are you okay? I'm like, oh, shit, I don't know, man, the brakes, are, there's no brakes in that car, and like, you got to remember there's dick spray painted all over it. And it was like, fuck off and rap sucks. And like all these rainbows, like and this shark fit on it. Like it was this hellion fucking car that, you know, so like it was definitely sticking out as it was like approaching the, the toll booth going 50 miles yeah. an hour flying through there. And, uh, and so, yeah, so, uh, that was, yeah, that was the hell car from Haggard. Oh God, that's <laughs> so. The joke was on you, essentially, pretty much. That's what it seems like. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times the joke was on me, or yeah, or, or really anybody that was inside of people that were fucking with it. <laughs> so after all that, you got into a huge fallout with Bam, and I I don't know where I heard. I feel like I heard off of like the commentary guys. I used to watch the commentary too, because I know you. It was kind of like more of like the CKY thing, like. 
more like the radio band like on like the dvds and like i heard something about that when like during an episode and what was the like what did you guys fight about what was it like was it over like a girl or like what ha like, i mean I, i'm just like trying to like you know limit yeah, no, no it's not like that like um people have asked that so much over the years and they always speculate and try and say like all this ridiculous shit like you'd be surprised at all the craziness that people write like Oh, like, I think that he slept with April, and that was why, and it's like, you guys are fucking sick, you know, like, <laughs> but that's what trolls on the internet do, you know, sit around all day and come up with nonsense, and, uh, and make stuff up. Now, realistically, um, all that really happened was that I kind of needed to bail, like, on what was happening, and I, uh, I had drug and alcohol problems, right. and, and, uh, and we were, we were fucking crazy, man, we were, we were doing a lot of drugs, we were drinking hard, and and living an insane life, and uh, and I basically had to get away from that situation to save my own life. You know, um, I uh, actually tomorrow I'll be nine years clean and sober, and uh, and tomorrow's my anniversary for for sobriety. And um, yeah, at that point, I just I needed to kind of get away, get out of that scene, and so I kind of just fell off the face of the earth and. And took care of myself, and and uh, and and you know, and, and had to kind of step away from 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 that scenario. I don't think there was anything like you know more than than regular friendships. But people love to speculate that there was some kind of crazy falling out. It was more or less that we just kind of needed a break, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. Most people don't uh, hang out with with their friends every single day of their life, you know. And right. You usually see each other once or twice a week or whatever, you know, and you hang out a little bit here and there. And throughout those years of, of, of CKY, Jackass, Viva La Bam, not really CKY, but more Jackass and Viva La Bam years, like every single day you're filming and you're around each other every day, dude, for, for five, six years straight. It, it got to a point where we all kind of needed a break from each other and and, uh, and everybody kind of went their separate directions. They People focused on Bam and I, I think because we were the friends the longest, but um, but everybody kind of went their separate ways for a little while, retreated and just kind of needed to take care of themselves. And, and, and once that time kind of concluded, like everybody talks and everybody hangs out, like Bam and, and Nikki were at my wedding, you know, like it's like everybody is still close. Like Bam's my brother, man, and he always will be. And, right. uh, and and same with, with Brandon, same with Ryan, same with Ray, same with Jess, Darren, Chad, Vern, you know, like all those guys like are that way. And, and, and the same thing with, with Steve-O and Pontius and, and Dave and Aaron and, and Preston and, and Jason, like, and, 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 you know, and Knoxville and, and Tremaine, it's like, there's a connection there forever in life. And, and I love those guys. And so, it's always made out like it's this crazy thing, but it, it wasn't. It was really just that I needed to take care of myself and, and, and uh, save my life, man. Like, I, I had a serious fucking problem, and, uh, and I needed to take care of myself. So, so I did. And, uh, and, and at those point in time, people would always say stuff, and I was like, well, I'm not going to respond to it because it's just nonsense, and I really just needed to kind of focus on getting better and getting healthy, you know? Well, congrats on nine years tomorrow, actually. That's like... Yeah, thanks, man. It's like the same thing with uh, Brandon Novak. Like he was, uh, he was in rehab. What, like sixteen, seventeen times, and now like he's doing like what, like amazing now. Like after seeing like interviews on like Good Morning America, and like yeah. he was on your podcast recently. I just saw, and like it's just like if he can do it, anybody can do it. Like I have a friend who's in the same boat. He's been in rehab at least like eight times, and yeah. he's in George W. Hill right now. Yeah, I think the thing is, is it's a choice, man. Like, if, if you want to do it, you probably can succeed at it. But if you, if it's like, if you need it, that doesn't matter. But if you want it, that's what matters. Like, there's a lot of people that need it. I needed it long before I got there. Novak needed it long before he got there. Steve-O needed it long before he got there. But when the desperation kicked in and, and each one of us was ready to make a change, that's what really made the difference. And, and, uh, yeah, man, like, that's the way you see it. It's like, you know, someone like Novak who, you know, living in an abandoned house and shooting dope for 20 years, like, 
he's alive somehow because I guess there was another purpose for him and, and he's doing it right now and it's amazing. You know, like he, he's a brother of mine as well, man. I love that dude forever. And, and to witness that happen and, and to watch him do what he's doing, it, it's incredible because, uh, because he's giving back, you know, yeah. like, he, it's like, it's like a dude who shoots dope all those years is now like living an awesome life. And he says the thing that really sticks with me a lot. He says that, that sobriety gave him everything that drugs and alcohol promised him. And that's like, that's a really awesome, like, you know, statement because it's true, man. Like the life I have now, nine years later is incredible. And, you know, and I had a lot of fun when I was out partying like a madman too. I don't act like I didn't have fun then. I had a blast. But then it got dark, and then addiction really set in and was and turned on me, and it, it became a problem, and it, it wrecked my life. But like prior to that, you know, you know, when you're out living like a rock star, it was a lot of fun, you know, and and uh, and I can't deny that. But but it got it went off the rails and uh, and had to get things under you know under control, and 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 life is is rad this this way too. Like I, I have such an awesome life. I, I'm a camera dude. I travel the world. I got married, incredible woman, and uh, and. I have this awesome life that, that I always wanted, and uh, and I got it from from uh, giving up drugs and alcohol. So it, it's rad, and and, uh, and and I watched that happen with Steve-O. I watched it happen because he's a little bit ahead of me in this, and uh, and then I watched it happen with Novak, and it, it was a little a little behind me, and and, uh, and it's just cool to witness, especially like if you are struggling with addiction, like it, it's really incredible to watch somebody, you know, work through that get help from others right. in a program and be able to work through that and no longer be a slave to drugs and alcohol because that shit ruins your life. And it's always funny because I, I, I would be like, oh, like, you know, like, what, we're going to swan dive into an empty pool or this is your brain on drugs shit. You know, like when you're a kid, you see all these things and it never really made any sense. And the thing I always thought was like, dude, it's not, it's not like I, it's not like I smoked a little pot and then felt like I was Superman. It was that, Pot wasn't that much of anything, and then all of a sudden, cocaine's not that much of anything, and then all of a sudden, a little heroin's not that big of a deal, and then all these pills aren't, and none of it's not that big of a deal because you just slowly ride into it, right? Like, and, and before you know it, you're fucking slave to that shit, and you like, it's not like you're like, oh, like I'm just gonna go hard right away. Oh my god, I'm immediately addicted, you know? Like it, it's not, it doesn't work that way. It's this, it's this subtle thing that sort of creeps up on you, and. And before you know it, then like bad things, and that's if you're an addict. And, and a lot of people in college party like maniacs, drink like madmen, and and uh, and they're not addicts, and they can kind of get back into regular life and drink regularly and, and smoke a little weed here and there, and, and that's cool. And like, and I don't frown upon any of that stuff. It's just I know for me, I'm an addict, and if and if if there's someone else out there that is, there's an awesome way to kind of live life, you know, without it. Right, and I mean. I've given up friendships with, like, many people. I used to be friends with these guys, and, like, we would all, like, smoke pot, you know, drink and whatnot. And I was really I, – I was kind of bad. Like, I would drink and, like, I would, like, drive to my house. And, like, the kid lived 20 minutes away. But, like, looking back – that was last summer. Looking back now, like, I don't really drink as much because my girlfriend, her dad struggles – like, struggle with alcoholism and all that. And, like, she doesn't even talk to him anymore. So, like, she basically, like, saved me from, like, drinking my life away or, like, potentially like hurting me or killing someone else. And I just like seeing like the changes I went through last year to here, it's like amazing now. Like, and seeing what like everyone's going through, like Brandon, for instance, like he cleaned up his life. You cleaned up your life, which is actually amazing. And like, it's just, I don't know. Like a lot of people like fall in that little, like, I guess like alcohol, drug addiction, like just like with a flip of the switch, essentially. That's what I'm getting yeah. at. I, I think, especially like if you are an addict, you know, everyone has a different belief on what that that means. But uh, for me, I think I was from from the get go. You know, like I, I eat candy like an addict. You know, like I I jump off roofs. I like the adrenaline rush like an addict. I'm, I'm that way. Like so, it's always been in me. But there's other people that you know they can take it or leave it. Right. Like a bunch. Um, said to me one time, he's like, dude, the difference between you and me is like the drugs and alcohol are the party for you. Like for me, it's just party favors. You know, like I can just be there hanging out and have a little, have a little bit. Like for you, that's the entire party. You know, and that's how it was. Like my whole focus was get drugs, get alcohol. Like 
I don't give a shit who's there. I don't care who I'm talking to. I just wanted to make sure I had enough of a buzz or enough of a high going on and, and then that everything was good, you know? And, uh, and I don't know. It's just, like I said, I had a lot of fun in some of those years, but then it became depressing and dark and, and it's no way to live. And, and there's an easier, softer way if, if, uh, if you're open to it and willing to do the work, you know? Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, so after like pretty much like you left and all that, the death of Ryan happened. And I remember that they clearly like it's clear as possible. Like, I think I was a junior in high school when it happened. And, uh, I remember like a lot of Facebook posts, like what, how did you hear about that? Like who did April call you or Phil or like, how did you hear? Like, no, how- uh, my, one of my buddy, Aaron, uh, Asher called me. I mean, uh, well, a lot of people called. It was like five in the morning and a ton of, uh, calls and, and texts and stuff. I mean, I mean, it was like a mile from it, it crash site. Was a mile from where I was living. Oh, really? And like now, like, and it's just like after looking through all the year, like looking back and watching all you guys doing all this like crazy stuff. It just like it's amazing how, like, you know what I mean? Like nothing happened to you guys, but then like one night it just happens, just like that. Yeah. You know what I mean, and it it's happened to me too. Like I've had friends who were like killed because like a drunk driver hit them or like back in 2012, like I was supposed to go out with these kids. I didn't go out. These two kids got killed and hit and run right where I was supposed to be. And like, it just like kind of shook me up a little bit because like, I always think like it could be me this time, you know? Yeah. I mean, so like, do you still like, I know that are you getting like better, like, I know how, like, hard it is, like, to lose somebody, and I know how, like, difficult it is for, like, you guys, because you guys were, like, brothers and, like, been around with everybody. But has it gotten, like, better, like, ever since it happened? Like, have you got you like have you like gotten, like, used to it, I guess? I, I don't know how to, like, really word this. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I, think, uh, I think what happens, I think, obviously, like you said, you've lost people as well. And I think um, what you notice, what happens, especially in traumatic deaths like that, um, you know, obviously everyone grows old and dies and that's the natural thing. And we all know that death is a part of life, but, um, when it happens traumatically like that, I think obviously it's extremely devastating and, and hard to deal with. And then, um, you know, uh, like when Ryan died, I was fucking numb for three months, dude. I don't remember three months. Like I don't uh, remember from June 20th until like into the fall. Oh, wow. I, I just was in this blur, of, and I was sober, you know, and that's another crazy part is I was a year and nine months sober when he died, and and, uh, and I don't remember those three months. I just remember this fucking blank, like, just fog. Yeah, you know? no. Uh, and I think that every one of us experienced the crazy, you know, that, that devastating loss because it was a huge part of each one of our lives. Like Ryan was a huge part of me, you know, and, and, uh, and, and that, you know, that never goes away. Obviously. Um, I have a picture of him right here in my office and, uh, you know, um, you know, I talk to him a lot and I, and I think about a lot of the funny times and all that good stuff. And, um, but I think as time goes and life goes and you lose a lot of friends and you lose people like that, especially, you know, drugs, alcohol, all those things take people from it. And, um, and as that goes, you learn to carry it. I don't think it ever goes away, but you learn to carry that loss. And, uh, and some days you're like, like with Ryan, I'd say like now at this point, you know, um, like, you know, seven and some odd years later, like, a lot of the time when I think of Ryan, it's happy thoughts, good stuff. And, uh, every once in a while I'll get bummed out, but like, but in the beginning it was just total bum for a long time. And then, and then you started to get happy. And it was actually Spike, uh, Jones from, from Jackass stuff. Like he was actually one of the dudes that got me to be the, fir- the first time I started laughing about Ryan. It was at his service. Like he was like, dude, what about some of the funny shit? Like what was the funniest time? And like, and I thought of this time, I was talking with him about it, and we started cracking up, and that was the first thing that kind of got me laughing. And, uh, and and that was, like, a good thing is, like, 
because it hurt so bad. But like at the same time, you go to that place of realizing, like, dude, this dude's lived an incredible life. I feel lucky as hell that I've spent so much time with him and, and got to have such an amazing life together. And and, uh, and so I just cherish those memories. And a lot of my memories of Ryan have nothing to do with the camera. They have nothing to do with the TV show. They have nothing to do with any of that stuff. But it's all about, like, the actual personal connection with him. Right. And um, so, so that, you know, I think it was a little odd because I've had other friends die, but I never had a friend die that, that had notoriety. So there's a lot of people weighing in on it, how they feel about this and that, whatever. And, and you just kind of got to take that shit with a grain of salt and, uh, and and then just, you know, go through what you're going through. And and uh, I did some grief counseling and some other things with, with him because uh, I, you know, I was struggling and, uh, and I was sober and, and my normal thing would be to do drugs and numb that shit. And I couldn't, I had to stay sober. So like, so I did that, you know, and, and uh, but like I said, now at this point in time, I, I have good good memories. It's still hard to believe sometimes that you're never gonna just see him again. Yeah. But uh, but you know, but but the nice thing about Rye is there's tons of footage and tons of pictures, and and there's people on Instagram that have like accounts that like, like I think it's called or something, and they like they always put up pictures of them, and I I love seeing that shit, man. It, it makes me happy and it gives me like funny thoughts. And, and uh, there's so many good, funny times with him that, that it's, it's hard to be sad for too long. Right, yeah, no, I get that feeling, man. I mean, I had the same thing with those guys and then with my grandmother because she died back in 2014 and I was in that, like, you know, emotional state. And I uh, actually got a tattoo, like, to remember her this year, actually. And, uh, nice. But um, so to get, like, uh, so to get to, like, more, like, I guess, like, happier, like, subject, I guess. So – you're doing a podcast where I guess it's like the same theme as like what I'm doing essentially. I don't know. What is the theme? So like I'm interviewing like, you know, singers, songwriters, people who are on TV, like, you know, whoever does something cool pretty much like what, what's your podcast more about? Like what, what have you been? Uh, you know? my, my podcast is called Bathroom Break Podcast and it's basically that everybody boots. So I sit down with anybody, you know, like people from all walks of life, and uh, and we just talk about like whatever it is you're into, and and, uh, and also just kind of, you know, like not that like my wife and I sat and did an episode basically on like farting while you're sleeping and shitting with the door open, you know, and so like uh, we have a fun relationship like that where we just goof around and and you don't take ourselves too seriously, and and. Uh, so we talk about that. Then I, I, this week, I just had uh, a friend of mine, Tommy Aloni. He's a documentary filmmaker. He made uh, the Bill Murray stories, that, which just is coming out right now. And uh, he also made I Am Santa Claus and Ghost Hands. Um, so he's done a lot. He's had some successful documentaries on Netflix and, and uh, Amazon Prime and those things. And um, so we talk about the process of making films on that episode. Uh, I sat down with Rick Kosick, who's a camera guy from Jackass. And he's also like, you know, super well-known skateboard photographer for Big Brother Skateboard Magazine and right. stuff with, with Chad Muska and all this. And he's, he's got like legendary photos, man. And uh, so we sat and talked about that stuff. And yeah, it's just kind of the idea is everybody poops, you know, and everybody's got a story. So uh, so I, I love to sit down with, with, with anyone, uh, you know, with, with because when you think about anybody, somebody walking down the street has an incredible life story that you know nothing about. And so it's. So that was what was inspiring to, to want to do that, you know, with the podcast. And, uh, and it kind of just got me a, a little bit of an outlet, you know, for all these years since um, since the Jackass, uh, Viva Van days, I have been like, you know, doing my own little projects, but I've also been a camera guy, you know, that's like, that's my day job. And uh, and so it's rad because it's a creative life, but, but at the same time, I had always like kind of performed in front of a camera, you know, for since I was ten years old. So there was like a little something missing, and I'm like, man, maybe you know, maybe a podcast might be something fun to do. So, uh, so I decided to do that, and we, we started that, and uh, and that's been fun, man. It's it's kind of opened things up. I I went up like my my buddy who's a comedian he came on the first episode, and and he uh, and he was like, dude, you said you always wanted to get up on stage and try comedy, but you never did it, and I was like. Yeah, I always wanted to do it. He's like, well, how about on the 24th? And I was like, oh, shit. So, like, 
I got called out and then and then I did it. You know, and I went up on stage and did did, did, a, I did ten minutes and uh, and it was a lot of fun and got some laughs and and, uh, and I had a blast and it was something I always wanted to try. So I got to try it and I feel like that was a result of starting this this podcast thing. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we're, we're going to actually start filming some more skits uh, here in, in November when I finish the show that I'm doing right now. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to come back to Westchester and shoot a couple little things with uh, Di Camillo and, and uh, Rake and stuff, and then uh, put those up on YouTube and stuff, and, and just kind of just kind of getting going again a little bit, just to have like a little bit of an outlet, like a creative outlet. Um, I think you know, in those years, it was tough because. After you do Jackass and after you do Evil Dan, like you, you have an image and everyone goes, "Oh, Brad, you're the guy that shits on things." Like, I only want to see you shit on things, and, and like, it's fun. It was funny. It was a blast. But, um, but I feel like maybe they forgot about the fact that like TKY was a bunch of stuff. You know, it was like skits. It was the Jackass type stuff. It was all this. So like, you weren't limited. You know, and um, and I think so. It made me a little bit camera shy for a minute because I was like, I, it, it was hard to try to do what people wanted you to do, but you're like, I, I want to do stuff that makes me laugh. That's what we started doing in the beginning, and and I'm just going to try that. So um, so that's what we're doing at this point. It's like just setting up some skits and some things that we want to do that are just, you know, just for the fun of it and not, not looking for, for anything out of it or whatever, but just, you know, might put them out on YouTube if people want to check them out. But, but, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a fun, like, new beginning, you know, because, like, uh, been a lot of years where I was kind of just off the map, off the radar, and, and it's been fun to just kind of go, okay, let's try this thing again, man. You know, yeah. like something that I've loved my whole life, and, and I and I always will. Definitely. I mean, you did actually. You just kind of answered my question, my uh, other question, but I mean, that's what I'm doing. That's what I like about this. Like, I get people's stories. Like, usually, like you'll get like an interview where it's just like, oh yeah, you're a singer. You've been singing for like 20 years, this, that, and the third. But like, I like going deep in depth. Dude, uh, that's the word I'm looking for. I like going deep into people's stories because, like, it's – you never get that. And, like, you find a lot of interesting people with interesting stories. Like, you, you find people who are either, like, I was on drugs for, like, 10 years. And now I'm, like, off drugs. Or I'm a rapper. I open up for, like, Eminem. And it's just, like, that's what I like. That's why I like doing what I'm doing. Like, I go deep into people's stories and they tell me, like, everything. And, like, it's all, like, positivity, positivity. And, like, it's just, like, pumps me up for, like, what I'm, like – going to be going through in the next like couple years like for for instance i'm planning to go to la and move like live out there um in the next like year or so because i just want to like pursue my like dream and like interviewing people and like getting like my name out there pretty much and all that stuff and it's just like amazing that like you know it's just like amazing like what like you can like hear and like how like it affects like people like you know what i mean yeah Oh yeah, it's rad to sit down with people because like that's what I've noticed with the podcast thing, dude. Is like I have these friends that I've been friends with my whole life, and then if you just sit one on one for an hour and talk to them, it's like you learn all this new stuff about them. I'm like, well, I didn't even know that, you know, <laughs> I've known you for 25 years, you know. <laughs> and it's like, but it's fun. It's cool. And that's what's been really cool about the podcast deal and, and doing that. And yeah, I mean, after watching you, like I've learned a lot of new stuff about like you and I am like, you know what I mean? Like I've learned stuff from like the radio show and the TV show. And, but like after talking with you for about like an hour in like the next couple of seconds, like I've learned a whole lot about you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. That's right. No, it's fun, man. It's cool. But I mean, Hey, like this is actually like one of my favorite interviews ever. Like, honestly, I truly am like thankful for you, like actually like coming on my show, giving me like the hour to, you know, chat and all that. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you having me on. It's been fun. It's been cool to, to talk and and uh, I get to know you. And, and dude, good luck with everything for real. Like, if you do come out here, get in touch with me. Like, I don't know if you're trying to do production stuff, but get in touch with me and just reach out if you, if you do move out here. Definitely. Um, I mean, I would also like, you know, like, eventually I do want to, like, interview the whole CKY cast eventually, like, Brandon, Rake, and uh, but, like, everyone's, like, all busy now, you know what I mean? Yeah, I have been trying to get Bam every now and then, but you know he's like, you know I can never really get a hold of him. Essentially, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, hopefully that will happen eventually. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure if you're persistent about it, you'll make it happen. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, th cool. thanks. Yeah, thanks again though for coming on um, and all that. Absolutely. 
I actually liked hearing your story. You know, we got to, you know, learn a lot. And, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Cool. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. And, yeah, if, once I move out there, like, once I, like, get everything settled, I'll definitely hit you up. You know, I have my camera. I do my vlogs on YouTube, and I do this also. So, you know. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good, man. Definitely. All right. See you around, man. All right. Take care. Later. Later. All right, guys, that was it for today's episode. It was an hour long. Wow, that is actually really great. I'm actually going to post this on YouTube. So that's it for this week's episode. I am done. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode with Chris Rad. Great episode. Nicest guy. It took a little intermission, but, you know, that's how it's going to work. So I'm done today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, go on all my social media websites right here. I am to see you guys next week for a new episode. Deuces, fam. Her body's more like September. She burns through the night like an ember. And all those things we try forgetting, I remember. But we say we all fine, we all fine. Sunny day dreams and we up now.